Hey everyone. So today we're going to practice some problems called tippers taken from a book, um, a physics textbook. There's some of the more interesting problems that we can do all year and they're written in such a way that um, I would have trouble replicating them. They were also written by the person who's the main author of the AP Physics 1 test. So they're good practice. Now, where you'll find this is in your AP Physics 1 booklet. And it's actually at the end of the problem section in section T-1. And it's titled Ranking Exercises Slope. So I thought I'd work through them because you really have never seen a problem quite like this before. Let's get to it. So number one, the first one on the page says, rank the magnitude, sizes of the slopes of the graph at the labeled points. And what it would like us to do is to rank those four from greatest to least. So the greatest magnitude would be on the left in spot one, so on and so forth. So here's something right out of the bat. This says the magnitude. Now what that means is that we would ignore, you got it, the direction. So what that's really telling me is that if it's positive or negative, doesn't matter. I'm gonna throw this out at you. The very first thing on these ranking exercises, there's almost always a trick. Now, when it comes to tippers, I always like to take the low hanging fruit. And one thing that I see right away is that the slope for B and C is definitely the same. So that's easy. I also see that B and C are definitely less than D. I mean, it's just not as steep. So then the question is, where does A fit in? So in order to be able to compare those, I think I have to actually do some measurements. So for D, I've got a rise of one, two, three, four, five, six over one. So D has a slope of six. A has a slope of rise over run, one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's over two, so it has a slope of three. And B and C have a slope of one, two, three, four, five over one, two, over four, so it's five fourths. Now back to A. A really has a slope of negative three, but because it's asking for the magnitude, not the direction. I know it bothers you. The answer for the magnitude of that slope is three. So if I were to put those in order, I'm going to say D is greater than A, which is greater than B, which is equal to C. And you actually have to put in the greater than and the equal signs in the problem, in your answer. All right, that's the first one. So the trick and you got to make sure that you include those arrow um, <laughs> equal sign and greater than. All right. I want you to take a moment. Got it? And explain your reasoning. Write it out in a few sentences. Push. Pause. So this is what I wrote. To explain my reasoning, I need to be logical and complete in my answer. And I said, the slope, of a, the, li <laughs> the slope of a line is the rise over the run. I'm showing the person grading that I know what the heck slope is. Next, B and C are on the same line and thus have the same slope. D is the, s is the steepest. And even though A is negative, the magnitude of A is greater than B and C. I feel pretty good about that. Let's look at the next one. Now, the next one says, four points are labeled on a graph. Rank the slopes of the graphs at the labeled points. So, wait a minute. Is that the same graph? Did the book mess up? Uh, oh, I see what's different. 
it's merely asking for the slope, not the magnitude of the slope. Now, we've already actually calculated what those slopes are, so this should be pretty easy. This slope is 6, this was 5 fourths, and this slope was negative 3. So if I were to write this out as a ranking exercise, I would say D is greater than B, which is equal to C, which is greater than A. Right now, take a moment. Push pause and explain your reasoning. Ready? And we're back. So, is this what you guys got? The slope of the line is the rise over the run. B and C are on the same line, so they have the same slope. D is the steepest slope and is positive, and A is a negative slope. Why did I have you do that? Just so I could highlight that you have to read the question really carefully. And I wanted to highlight the difference between magnitude and a value that's just the slope, which would also necessitate the direction. Turn the page. Next. It says, four points are labeled on a graph. Rank the slopes of the graphs at the labeled points. That's not, those aren't straight lines. How do I find the slope on a curve? Yeah, that's right. Nice job. I have to draw in a tangent line. Now that tangent line is going to touch that graph in just one spot. So I'm going to start with A. And if I, you'll be able to do this better than I can on screen, but it's going to go boom, where it touches at just one place. I might, I might try that again. I'm not very pleased with that. Ah. Oh, that felt good. There's my, my tangent line for A. It only touches the graph in that one spot. For B, something like that. Jeez. C, and D, there we go. So the question asks for what is the slope, not the magnitude, just the slope. So what I see is that A is a negative slope. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that in the least spot. B has a slope of 0. So that's going to be the next less amount. Now when I compare C and D, at point C, the slope of that is definitely steeper. So I'm going to plug that in to the greatest. Did you see how I did that? I kind of I made sure I understood what the question was. I did my work with the diagram. And then I just did a process of elimination where I picked off the easy, low-hanging fruit. Sometimes they're really easy, actually. So right now, can you push pause and explain the reasoning? And we're back. All right, so that's what I got. I have a tangent line drawn at each point gives the slope at that point. For a position graph, this would be the instantaneous velocity. In class, when we talked about uh, an object that was accelerating, we could draw in a tangent line and find the instantaneous. Let's write that out again instantaneous velocity. Good. So to finish my answer, I put down point A is the only point with a negative slope. Point B has a slope of 0, and the slope at C is, is steeper than D. Last one. Shown are several lines on a graph. Rank the slopes from greatest to least, rank the slopes. All right, so any easy ones? Always start with the easy ones. Yeah, I see that A has a slope equal to zero. That is gonna be the least. Okay, oh, there's the bell. I guess I'm gonna have to pause. And the bell's over. So. 
I started off with A is clearly the least because the slope is going to be zero. Now, the rest of them, I'm staring at them and I'm thinking, am I seeing this right? Because to me, B looks the least steep or has the, the least slope. But when I look closer at it, and if I actually went and found the slope, if I pick two points on that line, the slope of that B is going to be 1 over 4. Slope for E uh, is the same thing, 1 over 4. So I know that B is equal to E. Now how about C and D? Well, at first glance, it definitely appears that D is steeper in my mind, but then I look closer and I see that C has a rise of 1 over 2, so the slope is a half, and D is the same thing. So by taking just a minute and double checking, I also see now that C is equal to D. So if I were to put this in, I'd have C is equal to D, which is greater than B, which is equal to E, which is greater than A. Yeah? All right. What didn't matter? What didn't matter? That's right. Where the line ends. And that's something that is, they're trying to trick you with that. They can't trick you guys. That's too easy. That where the line ends doesn't affect the slope at all. So I would include that in my answer. All right. Take a minute. Three sentences. Push pause and we'll come back with an answer. And we're back. This is what I got. The slope of the graph is the rise <laughs> over the run. The y-intercept does not affect the slope of the line. Ah, I want to point out what doesn't matter as well. C and D have the same slope of 1 over 2. B and E have the same slope of 1 over 4. And line A has a slope of 0. I think that says it all. Cool. All right. Hopefully this video helped. Ranking exercises. They're not bad when I talk you through them, but there's a lot of little things you got to be able to catch as you do. I think they're a great challenge. I like them because they're, they're difficult and they're different. Good luck. Hope you guys got this. We'll talk later.